the assassination of Julius Caesar, the end of an empire. Welcome to our channel, where we delve into the pages of history to uncover captivating stories that shaped our world. Today we embark on a journey back in time to ancient Rome, to a fateful event that forever changed the course of history. Join us as we explore the assassination of Julius Caesar, the end of an empire. The year is 44 BCE and Rome stands as the center of a vast and powerful empire. Julius Caesar, a brilliant military leader and skilled politician, has risen to become the most powerful man in Rome. However, not everyone is content with his rule. In the turbulent political climate of ancient Rome, a group of senators, including prominent figures like Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus, found themselves growing increasingly apprehensive about the rise of Julius Caesar. Their concerns were rooted in Caesar's expanding influence and what they perceived as his disregard for the cherished republican values that had governed Rome for centuries. Caesar's unprecedented military victories and his numerous political reforms had garnered him immense popularity and power. He had effectively consolidated authority in his hands, alarming those who feared the concentration of power in one individual. The senators worried that Caesar's ambition and disregard for traditional checks and balances would ultimately lead Rome down a path of autocracy and tyranny. To these senators, the Roman Republic represented a system of government where power was shared among the elite and decisions were made collectively. They believed that Caesar's actions, such as his appointment as perpetual dictator and his attempts to centralize authority, were eroding the very foundations of the Republic. Their concerns were not merely driven by personal animosity or jealousy, but rather by a deep-seated commitment to the principles of the Republic. They saw themselves as guardians of Roman liberty and felt compelled to act to preserve the balance of power and prevent the emergence of a single ruler. In their eyes, the assassination of Julius Caesar became a desperate measure, a drastic action to protect the traditional Republican values they held dear and to prevent what they believed would be the demise of Rome's cherished political system. The conspirators, led by Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus, were gripped by a genuine fear that Julius Caesar's unchecked ambition would ultimately dismantle the Roman Republic. They recognized that the Republic, with its separation of powers and institutions, had endured for centuries, providing a stable and balanced system of governance. Caesar's relentless pursuit of power, demonstrated by his self-appointment as perpetual dictator, raised concerns among the conspirators. They believed that his actions were undermining the very essence of the Republic and eroding the democratic principles on which it was founded. Driven by their deep commitment to the Republic, the conspirators saw themselves as its defenders. They believed that they had a duty to protect the system that had safeguarded Rome's liberty and allowed its citizens to participate in the political process. Their conviction led them to take drastic measures, even if it meant resorting to assassination, to preserve the Republic and prevent Caesar's ambition from transforming it into an autocracy. For the conspirators, the preservation of the Roman Republic was paramount, and they were willing to go to any lengths to uphold its values and prevent its downfall at the hands of an unchecked dictator. On the Ides of March, the 15th of March, 44 BCE, Julius Caesar is scheduled to attend a meeting of the Senate at the Theatre of Pompey. Unbeknownst to him, this would be his last public appearance. As Caesar enters the Senate chamber, he is surrounded by senators, including many of the conspirators. They carry hidden daggers beneath their togas, ready to strike. Suddenly, one by one, they unleash a series of fatal blows upon Caesar, ending his life. Chaos ensues as senators and onlookers react to the shocking assassination. The conspirators, hoping to rally support for their cause, flee the scene while brandishing their daggers, shouting that they have liberated Rome from a would-be dictator. Despite the conspirators' intentions to rally support for their cause, they faced an unexpected backlash from the Roman people following Julius Caesar's assassination. Contrary to their expectations, the citizens were not swayed by the conspirators' claims of liberating Rome from a would-be dictator. The Roman people had grown fond of Caesar over the years, appreciating his military successes and his efforts to address the concerns of the common people. They saw him as a hero and a champion of their interests. His charismatic leadership and populist policies had garnered him a considerable following and support among the masses. With news of Caesar's murder spreading, the Roman people were overcome with shock and grief. They mourned the loss of their beloved leader, viewing his assassination as a grave injustice. 
Instead of applauding the conspirators, the citizens began to question their motives and the validity of their actions. They were skeptical of the conspirators' claims of defending the Republic, suspecting ulterior motives and personal ambitions behind the assassination. The outrage and mourning among the Roman people created a fertile ground for Mark Antony, Caesar's loyal ally, to seize the opportunity and rally support against the conspirators. Through his powerful funeral oration, Antony further solidified the people's sympathy for Caesar, portraying him as a selfless leader who had the best interests of Rome and its citizens at heart. The unexpected backlash from the Roman people dealt a significant blow to the conspirators' plans, leading to a series of consequences that would shape the course of Roman history. Mark Antony, Caesar's close ally and friend, seizes the opportunity to address the grieving masses. In a powerful funeral oration, he stirs the emotions of the people, painting Caesar as a selfless leader who had the best interests of Rome at heart. The public sentiment turns against the conspirators, leading to a civil war between the supporters of Caesar, led by Mark Antony and Octavian, later known as Augustus, and the assassins, led by Cassius and Brutus. The conflict would determine the fate of Rome and the Roman Republic. The Battle of Philippi taking place in 42 BCE, proved to be the turning point in the conspiracy against Julius Caesar. Although Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus achieved some early successes, they ultimately faced defeat. Confronted with the inevitable outcome, both Cassius and Brutus chose to end their own lives rather than fall into the hands of their enemies. This pivotal battle secured the triumph of Mark Antony and Octavian, who emerged as the unrivaled leaders of Rome. With the elimination of the conspirators, Antony and Octavian solidified their power and set the stage for the transformation of Rome from a republic to an empire under Octavian's eventual rule as the first emperor, Augustus. The Battle of Philippi marked the end of the conspiracy and the beginning of a new chapter in Roman history. The assassination of Julius Caesar marked a turning point in Roman history. With his death, the Roman Republic crumbled, making way for the Roman making way for the Roman Empire. Julius Caesar's assassination brought about a series of political and social changes that shaped the destiny of Rome for centuries to come. After their triumph, Mark Antony and Octavian, who was Julius Caesar's adopted son and heir, divided the Roman world between them. However, their partnership doesn't last long, leading to a power struggle. Octavian proves to be a skilled politician and strategist. He emerges as the dominant figure and consolidates his power, ultimately defeating Mark Antony and his ally Cleopatra in the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. In the aftermath of the battle, Octavian, now known as Augustus, takes on the title of Emperor, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. With this transition, the political landscape of Rome undergoes a significant transformation. Augustus established a new form of government known as the Principate, consolidating power in the hands of the Emperor. This pivotal moment sets the stage for the rise and expansion of the Roman Empire, which would shape the course of history for centuries to come. The assassination of Julius Caesar highlights the complex nature of power and politics in ancient Rome. It reveals the inherent tension between those who desired a strong central authority and those who sought to preserve the traditional republican values. The assassination not only transformed the political landscape, but also had far-reaching consequences for Roman society. It ignited a wave of political violence as subsequent emperors faced assassination attempts and power struggles within the imperial family became common. Over the centuries, the assassination of Julius Caesar has been interpreted and reinterpreted by historians and scholars. Some view it as a necessary sacrifice to save the Republic, while others see it as a tragic event that hastened the end of Roman democracy. The assassination of Julius Caesar serves as a reminder of the fragility of power and the unpredictable outcomes of political upheaval. It demonstrates how the actions of a few individuals can reverberate through history, forever altering the destiny of nations. As we reflect on this pivotal event in ancient history, let us remember the legacy of Julius Caesar and the enduring impact of his assassination. It is through understanding the past that we gain insights into the present and shape a better future. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from the annals of history. Until next time.